and blue by Willis and Shante of Positive Light Ministry. Welcome to the Coon Brown Report. May the peace and blessings of the life-giving creative spirit be upon you and upon your family. My name is Melvin Ishmael Johnson, coming at you live from Skid Row Studios. I'll call in numbers 800-893-9562. You can listen to us live or download our show in any past show by Googling in Coomram Report. This week on the Coomram Report, we will hear some community voices from Cottrell Prescott talking about Perk EDU and Bobby Buck's 15 Minute of Fame hosted by Bobby Buck and Shanna Sterlings. Welcome to the Coomram Report. All right. Hey, we're here. <laughs> okay, let's let's start right off with Katrina. Can you tell our listening audience a little about your background, and then we we'll get off into uh, discussing Perk Edu. Once I want to say thank you for having me here today, Melvin. Mm-hmm. Um, my name is Katrina. I'm a student at West Los Angeles College. Uh, it's a community college in West Los Angeles. Um, I'm an engineering student majoring in chemical engineering, interested in its renewable applications. Uh, but my main focus is on, you know, giving back to the community and find different ways to incentivize students and bring out the students from, you know, the depths of despair that oftentimes students find themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, how about a little about your background? You grew up out here in uh, Los Angeles or what? Yep, born and raised. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right by West Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. So the La Cienica Heights. Yeah, went, went to high school out here. Well, well, how did you get your interest off into the sciences and like that? Okay. I actually went to uh, Woodrow Wilson Law Magnets up here in um, east mm-hmm. of Los Angeles. Uh, I was following it a field of, you know, law. And mm-hmm. um, I realized that my true um, idea about what I want to give back to society is not necessarily about governing its policies, but finding new ones. And that's when I realized that my true endeavor is to you know, be an engineer and create. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now tell us a little about, um, uh, at first, what exactly is PERC EDU? PERC EDU. As I said, it's about incentivizing students for positive student behaviors. Mm-hmm. Essentially, you know, um, it, there's an idea that, the idea basically is that, you know, um, 30% of students in community colleges across the country are continuing to succeed, whether it be to receive a certificate, an AA, or a degree in transfer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that means 70% of students are not continuing. They're not finishing and they're not uh, receiving their degrees. So Perk EDU is a platform to focus on that 70%. It's about incentivizing and pulling that 70% back out of the darkness, as I said, and bringing in that light that they can continue and they can and they will complete the degrees. Mm-hmm. Now, is it um, a, a particular type of application or something like that? What? Right. It's a mobile platform. So basically, you know, one of the main ideas is um, we solicit the local businesses and ask them to be benefactors to the cause. Uh, essentially, they provide us with discounts, 50% and up, and freebies in order to for our students to attain their success and continue to stay on campus, meaning, um, you know, we developed an app. Right mm-hmm. now, this app is currently it's on beta process in West Los Angeles College. But the app, essentially, you go to campus, you check in on the app, and immediately you receive that instant gratification. You receive a free perk. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We have more perks down um, that you have to, they're called earned perks that you have to, you know, work towards and you have to see that, you know, mm-hmm. you want to gain, you want to stay on campus to continue to get get the bigger ones, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, that's really the, the idea behind it is you keep going to campus because your education is the real perk. And, mm-hmm. and whether it be that we're giving you, you know, a, a free McFrat pay from McDonald's, mm-hmm. you know, you're getting some free blue books from, you know, to get to continue and do your grades or, you know, to get um, get your grades. But mm-hmm. the real idea is that you're continuing on your education, and that's mm-hmm. the real perk. Mm-hmm. Now, I saw something um, saying that current uh, research suggests that 81 percent or 22 to, I mean, 25 to 34 year old with the highest frequency among African Americans and Hispanic possesses a smartphone. Yeah. Now, what, what's the implications of that? Okay, the so, mm-hmm. right, right, right. What, what that basically is implying that um, there's a new tech era. It's a boom in the shift of, you know, current, whether it be media or whomever, but technology is the new shift. Mm-hmm. So the idea is, you know, what can we do in order to, you know, emphasize on that technology boost? Mm-hmm. And that's why we use technology. That's why the app was created. Mm-hmm. You know, the app is, is it's really just a tool by itself, but because the program is more than just the app. It, it has other implications. There's clubs, there's um, numerous other activities that we, we put ourselves into to really, you know, pull out that 70%. Mm-hmm. You know, knowing that statistic that, you know, uh, focusing on African-American and Latino students, being that um, in the in this community, the majority of our, our students are, you know, are African-American and Latino, which is great. We want to see that 70 percent can contribute and give back um there's also statistic i don't think it's in that that paper that says you know um students people in general look at their phones 20 times um they look at their phones more than 20 times an hour you know so that idea is you know if you're going to be looking down at your phone look at something that's going to be contributing to you Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, do you see this as a trend that's uh, coming in education, especially public education system? This, the platform, the mobile yeah. platform. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the guiding lines is that this is is pushed, is backed by our educational back facilities. You know, the administration. But the real power behind it is that we avoid the administration, we avoid the bureaucracy, because oftentimes, you know, great ideas, you know, great ideas, um, the administrators have great ideas, though they get lost in the the weaves, and Mm -hmm. and oftentimes, you know, um, they just don't share that true light that they they, they are. So this platform is is all pushed by motivated students, you know. We we do it through the Associated Student Organization, which I'm a member of as well. and that organization is full of motivated students. And all we really ask is that help us, you know, pull up the unmotivated students collectively. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. together we all become motivated. Mm-hmm. Now, this is uh, this would be a basically a student-run uh, program and all like that. Why do you think it, um, it, uh, it started off on um, a, a community college campus instead of a high school or a higher education like UCLA or USC or something like that? I think mostly because it's it's right there. Um, it's the pivotal point. You know, uh, community college students often, can you know, they, they completed the high school education and they're looking for that road to their new path. They're looking for that road to success, whether it be, you know, their associates or just a certificate program. The majority of students are looking to transfer. Mm-hmm. Now, on the other side, the universities, those students are usually highly motivated. Those students are completing their what they've gone there for, you know. That 70% doesn't hold there. More more along the lines of 20% of, of university students don't con- uh, contribute or continue. Mm-hmm. So, you know, focusing on the community colleges is is really the, the best idea is to, to collectively find that guiding light together, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Look, let's see. I think we got a caller on the line. Who am I speaking with? Hi, this is Cece. Cece, how you doing, Cece? I'm good. I'm just um, I'm calling because I do see that it would help um, college students. But what about high school? The dropout rate is increasing. Well, if we bring this to high schools, high schoolers are in school all day. 
So right when they come out, they can go to Starbucks and get a free coffee. They can go to the store and get a free shirt. Why don't you bring it to high school? Good for you. Great question, Cece. Um, I think the only reason we won't focus on high schools is the fact that most high schools try to keep their students away from the technology, meaning they try to stop the usage of iPhones and iPads and they really want them to focus on, you know, what's it's in, this, in the classrooms. The universities and community colleges alone, they allow a little more freedom and, and, and stability for the students, you know, to use their applications or their mobile devices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. You have another question or comment, Cece? Um, yes. So, okay, let's say um, you go through all the colleges and it's proven that it really works, it's really effective, and you know everybody wants in so how do you go about approaching uh, then high schools because you know I have siblings who are in high school and you know they don't want to stay there all day but if they instead of ditching I can get a free coke at the end you know like make it positive I definitely agree with you I think it is a cause worthy of you know a little more thought um, but currently we want to focus to see if it does turn out to be something successful. The idea behind it is that it has the, the ability to, you know, really create a change in these community colleges. And if that's the case, then I don't see why I shouldn't go to high schools. If we can get the support from the administration on these high school campuses, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. I, that was my only question. Okay. Thank you, Cece. Now, uh, what okay. do you, when you think about this as the um, implications for education as a whole, uh, this uh, uh, Perk EDU. How, how do you see that fitting in? I feel like currently education is, is community college education is lacking the main word community. You know, um, hmm. when I walk down the campus at West Los Angeles, Trade Tech, East Los Angeles College, they're all the same. They're, they all lack this one guiding light, and that's the community itself. The, the students, they don't know each other very well, you know, and... Um, they oftentimes just see each other as competitors rather than allies on the same path. And I feel like Perky to you, because we also have a, a, a tool where, you know, it creates a community on your campus. You know, you ask your peers questions. You ask them for advice anonymously or non-anonymously. On, on the application. On the, on the app itself. This is something mm -hmm. new feature that we're building, actually. And, you know, you can ask questions, whether it be about, uh, you know, a math-related questions, science, uh, you name it. And um, I believe that that can create what the community college is missing, which is community. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another call on the line. Who am I speaking with? Uh, you're speaking with Rosas. Rosas, hey, do you have a question for Katrea? Yeah, I, I was just uh, tuning in. Uh, when is it going to uh, release to, like, LA Trade Tech? Because I go to school there. Because it seems like a really awesome program. We are currently working with the ASO for Trade Tech, and we look to be launching on their campus for next semester. Oh, that's awesome. All right, thanks. Cool. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, can you talk a little bit more? Um, um, I'm going to see if Bobby have a question. I want you to talk about the perk thing, because uh, Bobby is always talking about perks in relationship to um, some of his network. Can you explain that a little bit more about the perks? Yeah, Bobby and I briefly spoke a, a, a tidbit, and yeah. I think um, our our programs can, you know, coincide together collectively because you're looking for, you know, to uh, bring in a network of right. businesses. And essentially, that's what we have. We have a network of businesses and um, that provide perks for our students. Okay. Um, and talk a little more about what your program is uh, looking for. Okay, because what I want to do, I want to set it up to be like a uh, like a community where, we, like I say, a, a, like I said, I want to bring people together because um, everybody doing things separately. So um, bring them to one network, and then what I want to do is be like a, a, a resource center for people, for startup businesses, startup nonprofits, and uh, for uh, people getting out of the pen or, or wh where are they coming from having hardship, and they want to come somewhere where they can find some assistance or some help. And then also I want to mix that with a referral program. I'm going to be a resource center mixed with a referral program where people can get an incentive for referring people to get some help. 
So I like what you're talking about. So I see how we work. You know, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me ask you this. I, I see that uh, the core tenets of um, your offering to students. You mentioned four things. Can you touch on those a little? Engagement, motivation, inspiration, and support. So the first one, engagement. Again, we want to engage the students. We want to continue to drive them and give them the reason to continue their success. Mm-hmm. Motivation, that's really brought about the Perky to You Club. I didn't speak that much on it, but essentially we have, you know, the motivated students in a club, and we, you know, beseek the quote-unquote unmotivated students. We, we beseek that 70%. And we set up a booth, and every day, myself, among um, others, you know, we stand out and we just ask, you know, what do you need to be successful? We mm-hmm. want to help you get that. What mm-hmm. do you need? So that's the idea behind the motivation. Inspiration, you know, I'm watching you succeed, you're watching me succeed, and together we're succeeding. That's, that's the best inspiration I think you can get from anybody, yep. to watch mm-hmm. them succeed, and mm-hmm. we collectively will succeed. And then the support, you know, that's just, you know, that's just the summary, support. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll give you the tools, whether it be, you know, a software that can answer your questions, a software that can provide you with the perks. Mm -hmm. We're providing you that support. What what about the feedback? What kind of feedback from the faculty have you received from this, these projects? So far, everyone's been just unanimously just uh, shocked by the idea, really. Mm -hmm. They, they look, you know, look to it like we've never heard of such a thing, you know, and, um, it seems as if they don't really know how to approach it because it seems as if it's, you know, a little above the, the normal ideology of, you know, community colleges and student projects. Mm-hmm. And um, so the, the faculty, they give me all the support that I ask, you know. They mm-hmm. allow us to do presentations in their campus, I mean, in their classrooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, unanimously, they give us a lot of support and feedback. Um, I couldn't be any happier. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I think we got another call. Who am I speaking with? Hi, my name is Carmen. Carmen, how you doing? Do you have a question for Katrell? Yes, yes. I've been hearing about this program. I've been following Katrell in this program on Facebook. And I wanted to know, he mentioned right now about motivation and support. Would you guys have, like, in your program, um, probably plans for expansion to the university level, a four-year college? As far as transferring to the universities or moving the program to universities, we want to really see if this could, how far can we push this on community colleges so that more community college students can make it to the universities. Exactly. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, okay. you have another question? Uh, yes. I was also wondering, uh, you, going back to motivation, would you guys have included in this like a shadow program like you mentioned, mentors, which are great? Will you follow them through the system to the program, you know, a system and whatever they would need and make sure that the motivation does not decline? That's actually a really good idea. Something that we haven't really approached the idea of, um, you know, what happens once the student makes it. I mean, I feel like if they really can get the, the main components of what this program is and it can push them to that next level, I hope that they've already learned the valuable skills that they need to continue. But if not, uh, I'm definitely game to look into creating something or looking to make uh, a little, we called it a, um, like a, a shadow program. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm really encouraged with this because this is something I think we truly need. And I've met you personally, so I know that you yourself are a mentor to a lot of young men. So I'm looking forward to keeping an eye on your program and how it follows through. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, Just say um, um, I'm a college student. I hit campus. I come in contact with you. I'm struggling, average student coming out of high school. How would you approach me to get me, what would be your, um, how would you approach me to get me involved? With a smile. (laughs) 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 You know, there's just, there's not enough smiling going around nowadays, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) I want to, you know, help you boost your spirit. Know you can do it. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, you know, that's that's the biggest uh, veil over students' eyes is can I do it? You know, um, I was walking to campus one day. I want to mention this briefly. I was walking down campus one day, and I heard someone say, um, how'd you do on that test? And she says, uh, you know, oh, you know, you should have said it great. 
you know, um, you got a D and an F, C or B and an A. It doesn't matter. You tried your hardest. You did great. And if I think, you know, I would approach you with that idea, no matter what you're feeling, no matter how you're feeling, you're doing great because you're still here and you're continuing. Mm -hmm. Let's make this happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that energy itself helps mm -hmm. bring up the spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, I want to get, um, let's, uh, you know what, let's take a little short break for our community calendar, uh, then we come back. Uh, I, I, I kind of want to open it up to a round table uh, after we um, do the 15 minutes of um, of, of fame. I want to talk about it a, a little bit more. Thank you very much. Let's go into our community calendar. This is the community calendar for upcoming events. Uh, this event you don't want to miss this Saturday. May the 24th, starting at 11 a.m., you're asked to join the parade that will march to 6 in Gladys at Gladys Park. It's called the Walk the Talk event. This is a coming together of extraordinary people in the Skid Row area for a parade, performance, conversation, visual arts, and much, much more. Just to mention a few people that will be there, Mud Bug Band, General Jeff, Captain Michael Duffy, Michael Blaze, Dr. Mungo, and a lot of other people that you probably know. And once again, this is an event sponsored by the Los Angeles Poverty Department. And for more information, please contact 213-413-1077 or info at lapovertydepartment.org. Also, you need to get in touch with them to know where the um, parade is going to start, the route of the parade. Tuesday, June the 3rd at 7 p.m., Drum Stays Crew Run presents a performance of If the Shoe Fits. These are voices from solitary confinement. The play is written by Andy Griggs and Melvin Ishmael Johnson. In this performance, you will hear the stories of those who have been held in state-sanctioned torture. It's a free event, free parking, refreshments will be served. The location is the Vortex, 2341 East Olympic Boulevard, Los Angeles, 921. And this is also located at the corner of Olympic and Santa Fe. For more information, please contact Drama Stage 1 at yahoo.com or 213-479-1764. And you're asked to please save this date. Thursday, June 19th, 7 p.m. In celebration of Juneteenth, Drama Stage Kung Wan would do a stage reading of the 101 Club. This play is written by Judith Bowman and Melvin Ishmael Johnson. The 101 Club recalled the Freeman Field Mutiny, a series of incidents at Freeman Air Army Airfield, a U.S. Army Air Force base near Seymour, Indiana, in 1945, in which African Americans, members of the 447 Bombardment Group, attempted to exercise their rights as officers to use the base officers club. This is a free event. Refreshments will be served. And the location is at the beautiful Ford Theater, Edison Plaza. It's like an amphitheater. 2580 Cahuenga Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 9008. For more information, please contact Drama Stage 1 at yahoo.com or 213-479-1764. And if you have a community event that you would like announced on our show, send the information to dramastage1 at yahoo.com, attention early in Anthony. And the call-in number for the show is 800-893-9562. Now, back to our host. Okay, thank you, uh, Miss Earlene Anthony. Now, before we get into um, Bobby Buck's 15 Minute of Fame and get back to our round table with Cottrell, uh, I'd like to play two little short clips that I did um, some months ago with Jane Torres and Catherine McNitty. Yeah, hey, this is uh, De uh, uh, Melvin Ishmael Johnson, uh, Drama Stage Coomron and the Coomron Report. And uh, who am I here with? Yeah, it's Jane Torres from the Urban Garden Network. 
And we just come out of a meeting, Operation Facelift, talking about the uh, feeding and the cleaning and the health situation in uh, Skid Row. Can you tell us why you are here? Well, my friend Catherine McNenny invited me. Um, I am presently active in Skid Row doing gardening and um, like that um, with the Skid Row Housing Trust. And I wanted to come see what this meeting is all about. I also do food gleaning, uh, food recovery program, a volunteer with the um, Food Forward group from Farmers Markets. Um, so the food thing is interesting to me. It was a very good meeting. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you one question. In the meeting, I heard them say something very interesting about the possibility of the uh, adopt the block or adopt the street program. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's a great idea to get the broader community involved in uh, helping uh, keep the streets of Skid Row clean. There's issues with lack of trash cans. Um, and uh, when people come in to feed the, the Skid Row residents, uh, trash builds up and it's a big mess. And cleaning is the next step to all this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Now we, we um, have the radio show Monday night. You know, we, we, uh, you'll be part of the uh, radio show. We may anxious to hear your voice. Thank Thank you for taking the time. Tell us your name again in the organization. I am Jane Torres with the Downtown Los Angeles Urban Garden Network. Okay, thank you, Jane. Thanks. Great. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to send you the, uh, the link to he, Catherine okay. had your email. Yeah, uh, I wrote it down, but uh, yes, yeah, send it in. Yeah, this is uh, Melvin Ishmael Johnson, host of the Coomrah Report. And who am I speaking to here? Catherine McNenny. Okay. Oh, yeah, Catherine. Yeah, Catherine, can you tell us why you're uh, here for this meeting and what's happening here tonight? Yes, um, I moved into a loft on San Pedro Street about two years ago within Skid Row boundaries, and I immediately started to look around for who, who was doing good things in the neighborhood on the streets. And I was referred to OG by several people, and I met him, and I joined his crew, and I just... It, you know, started cleaning up with them, and I'm 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 a huge fan, and I'm involved. Okay. Yeah, he talk about you all the time, and tonight they're supposed to also discuss about the uh, feeding program, the clean up of the feeding program, the aspect of all of that. Can you comment on that? Your thoughts on that? I've been enlightened by um, learn, you know, meeting the people that actually clean and feed and listening to OG. At first, when I first moved to the neighborhood, I thought, oh no, you know, this is causing too much trash. This is this has got to go. But then, as I began to learn more about the, the people of Skid Row and the issues, I, cha I, I I've changed my mind. I, I now believe that the people that come to feed are doing, you know, really great work and. They just need to be educated on our issues that we don't have normal trash service like every other neighborhood. So we're trying to bring them into the organization and have them work with us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Catherine. Enjoy the meeting. I know I am. <laughs> Is that okay? Excellent. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to turn it over to Bobby Buck with his 15 minutes of fame. Here we go. Log on, <laughs> log on, log on, log on to BobbyBuck.com. BobbyBuck.com. Log on, log on, log on. Log on, log on, log on to BobbyBuck.com. BobbyBuck.com. Log on, log on, log on. BobbyBuck.com. All right, all right, here we are. <laughs> Bobby Buck, 15 Minutes of Fame, Action Talk. With me and Shana Sterling here tonight, and uh, we have our guests. We're going to be talking about trees. I know some of y'all think trees mean something else, but we're talking about these healthy, healthy trees. That helps, the ones that grow from the ground <laughs> up to the sky. <laughs> but um, now, who we have here tonight is uh, Miss Gabrielle Newmark and Kath Catherine McNeely. That's right. So how y'all doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thank you, Bobby Beck. All right, all right. So the first question I want to ask is, for both of y'all, when did you know you wanted to start planting trees? <laughs> uh, let Catherine go first. Uh, 
Melvin had a little bit of that in the uh, in the segment he just played immediately after moving into Skid Row. Like the the day after I moved in, I mm. said this place needs more trees. I need to figure out how to do it. I've never planted a tree in my life, but I'm I darn it, I'm going to figure it out. Mm. It's right. It's right, right, right <laughs> then. Okay. Yep. So what about you? Um, for me, I guess uh, you know I've I, I've kind of been planting trees for a little while. Um, uh, I've been involved with uh, like neighborhood tree plantings probably since high school. Uh, my mom, mm. who's an artist, uh, was working on traction back in the 80s, and she helped plant some of the first trees in the arts district over there with the, some of the community members that were doing uh, good work. And, um, and after I finished college, I was doing a lot of uh, community-based screening projects. So one of the larger projects um, I did and worked with in collaboration with a number of different nonprofits, we all worked together to get 224 trees planted in Pacoima. So, mm. so I've been doing it a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. And um, I know when I first came to check out a uh, tree planting, I, I didn't know what I was going to because, I mean, I, you know, I'm from the country, but i never seen anybody <laughs> grow no trees. <laughs> In the sidewalks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I went, and I remember uh, it was Window. Window. He um, said, you need to go check out this tree planting. And that's why I, I didn't know who Catherine was at the time, so I went. Uh-huh. So I'm looking around, trying to peep out at everybody. I said, who's Catherine? <laughs> yeah. But I seen the one that was being the ringleader that had to be Catherine. So, <laughs> so that's what I went. With the and biggest I, shovel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's when me and her first met. Yes. And um, I went to that. So it was, it was real interesting. I said, I want to learn something for myself so people who know me can mm-hmm. see me growing and knowing something, you know, know, learning more information that your way you can broadcast it out to everybody else. Mm-hmm. So um, I was going to say, when I met Catherine, what did you think when you met me that day? Well, I didn't know what to think because I was still somewhat new to the neighborhood to be I have to be honest with you I was slightly afraid I didn't know what was going to happen when I organized a community tree planting I didn't know who was going to show up mm-hmm. and um but but I immediately when you know I'm going to put a table out of food and I had a bunch of shovels and a bunch of volunteers show up it, it was beautiful and I I knew I wanted to keep doing it for the rest of my life, you know, after oh. the first one. And so you showed up in a bathrobe. <laughs> and I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> is he unwell? <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> but um, it was a fashion statement. And uh, you were really inquisitive. And I think we connected right away. And uh, uh, I wasn't quite sure what to make of you, but I'm so proud of you. You know, like uh, what, you've really um, gone... Uh, gone far since we we met at that first tree planting, and I just wanted to let you know I'm very proud of you. Well, yeah, thank you, <laughs> and because the person you met, that's my alter ego, <laughs> <laughs> OG Buck Wow. He kind of you know a, a remnant from the past. Yeah. I kind of bring, <laughs> bring him along with me from okay. time to time. Yeah, I figured that out. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, you know, there, there's some colorful characters in the neighborhood, and you're you know you're one of them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, appreciate it. What about you, Miss Sterling? Got any question for the ladies about the tree planting? Um, no, I just, I would like for you to tell people how they can either bring some trees down there to be planted, things that you may need to mm-hmm. help you continue to beautify. Oh, thank you. Let's get rope. Thank you. Um, I'm going to let Gabrielle speak a little too. Uh, I'm going to try to condense this. When I first decided I wanted, I moved into the neighborhood, I thought this, this street needs some trees. I, I wasn't thinking broadly I was thinking let me just beautify my street right. but you know I made it uh, I had to the, the way it was set up to plant those trees I had to water those trees myself and I continue to water those trees on my street every time I go out to water these trees people from the neighborhood homeless people from the SROs come up and not only want to help me water they have a million questions. They, they're they thankful. They want to talk about the trees. They want to talk about how can more trees get planted. So I started to see and my mind started to shift like mm. th- there's a need here in this community to really um, do much more. And so over the last several years, uh, Gabrielle has helped so much too. It, it became apparent that um, a crew would be needed to water the hundreds of trees that we do plan to to plant and um, we would like folks transitioning out of homelessness 
to be part of the crew to take care of the trees in their own neighborhood. So we're going to be working with um, Chris Liss okay. to hire folks to take care of the trees. Oh, okay. So um, we are in the process of getting that together now, and there'll be there'll be like a maintenance crew for the trees. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll need tools, so we will be uh, putting <laughs> that out there. But uh, I just want to put it out that I would love once we get a crew together mm-hmm. and get them out on the streets and starting to take care of trees to bring some folks back maybe. And I think we'll have a story to tell once right. we get that together. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, I think one of the things that um, has been most difficult through the years of my experience with tree planting is um, organizing a community to care for the trees, to sign the permission to plant, and then to continue the commitment to you know, take care of your tree through the years because the city does not um, water trees or maintain it. Um, there's other organizations that are great, like LA Conservation Corps. You have to raise the funding for them to water the trees. Um, so if you don't have that in order or, um, <clears throat> you know, in place, it's really up to the community to take that responsibility to water the trees. So what I've found <clears throat> over the years is it's pretty difficult and you mm. lose a lot of trees and okay. um so the the tree planting that i did which is what connected Catherine and myself together um through general jeff who uh, had introduced himself to me because i was talking crazy tree talk to you at a at a meeting and he came up to me and he said you need to meet miss mcnenny who's planting trees in skid row because i had a tree planting that um, I was organizing in the Arts District on April 27th, uh, a year ago. Mm. And um, uh, unlike Catherine, who was coordinating with LA, LA Conservation Corps and they were going to be watering the trees, I had to, um, I'd spent many hours walking the streets, meeting the businesses and getting them to, you know, sign off to water the trees because I didn't have the funding to be able to get another group to do it. So I I knew through experience, like we had to have people watering it. I couldn't be watering 37 trees on my own without a water tank. Right. And, um, and it's, it's been, um, I've, there's been some wonderful people taking ownership of the trees. And then we've had some, you know, some struggling that, you know, not because people don't care, they are busy, they forget. And right. so that's, one of the key components of our organization, Industrial District Green, um, not only to create jobs and green jobs and uh, and jobs for, as Catherine said, people transitioning out of homelessness and um, because this is a um, very uh, community-based organization, um, but because then we can have the, some kind of control over the trees being cared for. Okay, um, have y'all thought about maybe getting like maybe a, a workshop or something where you can educate and can find a way, kind of like what he's talking about, <clears throat> and get kind of fun or something like that for people to learn about water, you know, coming together as a community about doing it. Maybe something think that might maybe it was. Absolutely, we're open to all this kind of stuff. We want to keep it fun for yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, we do plan to continue to have community tree plantings because that okay. really does bring the community together and people love to plant trees it's not hard to get people to come to a tree planting and so we we want to continue to do that because it helps bring people together right and under circumstances where people might not otherwise get together and it is sort of a joyous occasion so we plan to continue to do that okay well are y'all doing anything for like uh, online fundraising or anything like that yes we are Okay, well, y'all want to give some contact information and some information to your online fundraising website. Gabrielle, why don't you do the honors? <laughs> um, well, uh, we have a, uh, a website that um, Catherine has worked pretty hard to uh, to get all together, and that's at www.industrialdistrictgreen.org. Mm-hmm. And so we have a place where people can donate online. Um, we also are encouraging and have had some great um, support from some local businesses in the arts district right now. Absolutely. And, and uh, Catherine's been working on that, that end of it as well. I can let her explain a little bit. So uh, a couple of businesses came to us and said, you know, we support what you're doing. Uh, we want to have some sort, some, something set up in our place of business near the, our cash register mm-hmm. where people can just pitch in a dollar or two. 
And so we we put together a little, you know, po small poster that a couple of places can do that. So we right now have the corner store in the arts district and Grateful Meds, which is a Prop D compliant collective in the arts <laughs> district. <laughs> and they have been huge supporters as has the corner store been too. Yeah. So we're, uh, so people have been pitching in a dollar or two when they go up and pay for their goods. And we've already raised <laughs> a few hundred dollars like that. It's been great. Yep. We're planting trees again this fall. So um, on 7th Street, this fall on 7th Street, we'll okay. be doing a planting. Oh, okay. Make sure you keep me posted ahead of time. We will. And give me a brand new robe. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all got any final thoughts to put out there to people or anything, any final comments or anything? Or is Charlotte got any more questions for these young ladies? Well, all I have to say is that we need to keep beautifying Skid Row. So help these ladies out. Donate some trees. Donate some tools. Donate some money. Some money. So we can keep <laughs> beautifying um, Skid Row. And, yeah, it's on, it's on the real. Yes, I mean, we all just need to come together and help everybody do everything that's positive. And we can't go wrong. That's what I think. So, uh, anyway, there you go. There y'all have it for the, this session of Bobby Buck, 15 Minutes of Fame, Action Talk. And I think we out of here. Peace. Thank y'all very much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks. All right. We straight West Coast in it. Right here on BobbyBuck.com. Global man, businessman, BobbyBuck.com. Got a call or what it is. Hey, yo, man, I'd like to give a <laughs> shout out to BobbyBuck.com. Nobody that site got it going on. So everybody log on to BobbyBuck.com. No doubt. Keep it locked right here on BobbyBuck.com. Okay, thank you, Bobby Buck and uh, Shanna Sterling. I want to get back and talking to uh, Catrell. You mentioned about the lack of community uh, support for community college. Can you talk about that a little? What, what do you think is like that? And what can we do about it, the community oh. do about it? What fashion? In yes. terms of getting more community support, uh, not uh, more community involvement in these community colleges. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a, a major focus on the platform itself. Is, you know, how do we bring in, collective, you know, collectivity? Uh, you know, how can we create community? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so far, the, the these forum pages that we're starting to build onto the application, I think that's a great way to, you know, mm -hmm. oftentimes students just want to be heard. They want to be able mm -hmm. to say what they think and, and, and do mm -hmm. what they feel. Mm -hmm. And um, until, you know, until we can provide them with a platform that has the idea of continue you know incentivizing yourself for student po positive student behavior mm -hmm. then it's still going to be lacking the community will be lacking mm -hmm. um i read somewhere it was a, a white page from the university of san diego and they said that um you know everybody's looking to buy something you know you just got to figure out what they want to buy and students they're looking for co connectivity you know that's mm -hmm. one thing they want to buy they, they're looking for that feeling of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, oftentimes what happens is they, you know, the biggest dropout rate happens five weeks into school. Why is that? Because that's when they have the first test. Mm -hmm. and they, they feel that they, they didn't complete what they needed to do. And if we can switch that mindset to you did because you, you're stayed and you're still here. We did because you tried what you had. You did because you tried your hardest and you're going to continue regardless of this test score because you have plenty of tests to come. Mm -hmm. If we can switch that, then I think we can create the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay. I was going to say, that's what I think mm -hmm. what you said earlier about the competing. Like, say, if you change the competing to the community, and it would be more togetherness, and people would be ready to help each other instead of get over and try to outdo each other. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So but you got to start with the communication and see what a lot of the texting and all the video games and all that, that takes our minds away from being human. Right. So we got to just, you know, I got some ideas, yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk more. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, we got another caller on the line. Who am I speaking with? Uh, Michael. Okay, Michael, you have a question for Katrib. Uh, I just or have a comment. comment. I, uh, I've been using that app uh, for a couple of weeks now. Uh, not even that, uh, but the, it's just made, just sticking around the campus and just being there, being involved with the whole community, it just made me a better student. I study more and I get better grades. And you you have a reward too. It's it's just like a win win. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to call in and just let them know that I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What what was it about the app that made you study more? 
it's just the motivation. You're like you're getting you're getting rewarded for being there. I mean, already the good grades are enough reward, but this is just like an immediate reward, something you get right away. Mm -hmm. And I just appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, now, now let me ask you this: When do you put the app in the students? What, what, what is the criteria for choosing uh, the student to put this? There's a little less than a thousand students that's downloaded the app on our campus. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, mm -hmm. about, there's 11,000 students on the campus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, um, it's for everybody, anybody. There is no real guideline of, of, as to who gets the app. It's really come to campus. You're going to see me promoting it. You're going to see mm -hmm. Michael promoting it. You're going to see somebody promoting it. Mm -hmm. um, and whoever that is, get it from them. We, we actually have a, um, a, um, a platform where you can put in a friend's email. You send the email to their friend. They download the app. And if they earn five points, you'll receive $2. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just like we want it for everybody because collectively it creates unity, and unity creates success. Mm -hmm. So you download it from the computer. It's, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's on your uh, smartphone. So that's the idea behind, mm -hmm. you know, the 85%. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, how did um, how did you come in contact with the Roby and uh, being Guillory? And I was actually just walking downtown, and <laughs> I saw the theater, and I said, hey, what's, you know, I was with a friend, and we walked into the theater, and... Um, I saw his set, and I was like, wow, this is awesome, you know. Um, he allowed me, actually, he gave me the access to film a video in there for Perk EDU. Mm -hmm. He asked me, what are you filming for? And I said, oh, we're just doing testimonials. We're doing a little bit of a, a quick little overview of the app itself and what it's about. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you see the, the main challenge in the um, education system now? The education... Um, you know, I read a book by uh, Salman Khan. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's, you know, inspiration himself. And he, he his book is called The Warm Road Schoolhouse. And um, I think what he wrote was was eloquent because he says that um, we have to switch that, that, that factor of going to school to learn. School should not be about going to learn because you should be edu you should learn to educate yourself. School should be about applying what you've learned and continuing to push what you've learned. And mm -hmm. I've never heard of anybody, you know, I've never heard anyone say anything like that. And ever since I've, I've switched my mindset to that, I don't go to school to learn. I go to school to apply, mm -hmm. you know, I, to, to see if what I learned was correct. And ever since then, my grades have just boosted. And, and the whole fashion of education has become more beneficial and positive in my, in my understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me open this up to the round table. What do you see as the, uh, um, the main challenge and changes that we need in our education system? Uh, anybody want to pick up on that? Mm. Well, I feel lack of communication, period, because the way that we text each other, we don't we don't spell out words. We use two, <laughs> two, the number two, mm -hmm. not the word two. So they don't know if they're using T O or T O O mm -hmm. or T W O, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're afraid of asking their professors, mm -hmm. um, I need a little help, because they feel like um, less of a person, or, you know, they don't, they don't want to communicate. But so, I think mm -hmm. if they could text a teacher, mm -hmm. we might have some... So some is this things. where a, a program like this would be so valuable um, uh, to students, communicating, uh, helping each other? I think so because, like I said, again, the students don't know how to, to communicate face-to-face -face anymore. Everything is done through texting. Everything is done through okay. amps. Okay. Uh, uh, Kathy, and then we're going to try one more call real quick. I can't help but uh, be concerned uh, reading all these stories about student loan debt. And it, it would... It seems to me that uh, community college is the wise choice for young people now. And I would think that um, information about finances uh, would be practical and beneficial. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. So um, who we have on the phone? Um, who am I speaking with? Hi, this is Ruby. 
Hey, Ruby, do you have a question or a comment for Katrina? I did. I was just wondering. Is, um, I go to Cal State LA, and uh, it looks like a pretty interesting app. I was just wondering if if they were planning on ex- of. Mm-hmm. Katrina. Oh, um, the expansion to universities may take a little while. We still want to, you know, focus in on community colleges, just being that, you know, um, we want to see community college students mm-hmm. succeed. So we want to continue to focus on these campuses. But if you want to take part-time classes at East L.A. College, just, you know, a few blocks away from Cal State L.A., by all means, it'll be there next. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Ruby. Okay. Thank Look, you. We're winding down. Let's take about 20, 25 seconds apiece. I need some uh, quick closing comments, contact information for those that want to give. Let's start with uh, Cottrell over here. Uh, once again, my name is Cottrell Prescott, student at West Los Angeles College. If you guys are interested in hearing a little more about PerkyDU, follow us at PerkyDU, um, hashtag PerkyDU, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, PerkyDU.org. That's our organization. You will find more information on that. You can email us at PerkyDU at gmail.com. Again, perkydu at gmail.com. And thank you all for your support. Uh, this is Catherine McNenny. If you want to learn more about uh, trees in downtown Los Angeles, you can go to our website at industrialdistrictgreen.org. And we're also on Facebook. And you can learn more about our plans to put together a crew of folks transitioning out of homelessness to take care of the trees. My name is Shauna Sterling. I am the host of the 15 Minutes of Fame. You can learn more about Shauna Sterling and the Sterling Family Youth Foundation by going to bobbybutt.com. This is Gabrielle Newmark with Industrial District Green and uh, everything Catherine already said. And I also um, wanted to to make a shout out to Tree People as well, who's been a great supporter of our efforts. And they have a Tree Map LA program that we're heavily involved with right now to map all the existing trees in the city of LA so we can know where we can uh, plant new ones. All right, it's me, Bobby Buck, and you can go to my social network, bobbybuck.com. You can also call 213-293-7983. And also, I'm on that Instagram. We call it IG. Hit me up at bobbybuck1, the number one. (laughs) <laughs> Don't spell it out. It's the number. So Bobby Buck won on the Instagram. <laughs> okay, let's let's try one more caller. Call. Who am I speaking with? My name is Keaton from Santa Monica. Okay, Keaton, you have a question and a comment for Cottrell. Hey, Cottrell. Uh, I just wanted to know, I'm a student at Santa Monica College, and I was wondering what I could do as a student to help get that app to my school. You know, Keaton, uh, we're actually looking to, you know, move this process on to Santa Monica College. Get in contact with your ASO, your Associated Student Organization. I believe it's Santa Monica that's right um, upstairs from the cafeteria. And they'll have more information about, you know, PerkyDU and my contact information. You can email me directly at P at yahoo.com. And I would look, I mean, I'll be more than um, opportune to speak more about this with you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Keaton. Okay, thank you. And I just want to say real quick before we wind down, uh, uh, the city of Los Angeles made $3.7 million available for the sanitation all the down, and 700000 is for personal hygiene. And I'm sure it's got to be some kind of way to tie some of that personal hygiene money into some uh, individuals, some homeless individuals down there, that can work with these uh, trees, because we're trying to push the same thing with hygiene kits. Mm-hmm. And I really would like to uh, see something, something like that Something more happen. permanent, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Okay, then, I would like to extend a special thanks to Cottrell Prescott, Bobby Buck, Shannon Sterling, Catherine Benini, Gabriel Newmark. <laughs> okay, and my co-host over here, Earlene Anthony. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, to the Qumran Report, and from your host, Melvin Ishmael Johnson. May the peace and blessings of the life-giving creative spirit be upon you and upon your family. i leave you with the song that opened the show, Darker Than Blue by Willis and Shantae of Positive Light Ministry. <laughs>
Mission. 